vessels, Father. We ask that you would just, uh, just blow through this place, Father. Have your spirit be poured out upon this place, Father. We pray for a fresh anointing this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Great our God, let's sing it out. End of our God. End of our God is for us. Then who could ever stop us? End of our God is with us. What could stand against? End of our God is for us. Then who could ever stop us? End of our God is with us. Then what could stand against? End of our God is for us. Then who could ever stop us? End of our God is with us. Then what could stand against? Turned into wine, open the eyes of the blind, then no one like you, none like you. Cause if you the darkness to shine, out of the ashes we rise. Our God is greater. Cause our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Cause our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise No one like you None like you Cause our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome and power Our 
Father, we trust you this morning, Father. We trust that your will is perfect for us, Father. So we submit to your plan this morning. Let's sing it out. Cause blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. I see. 
Father, we sing of your name this morning. 
Cause death could not hold you The veil tore before you You silenced the boast of a sinner The heavens are rolling The praise of your glory For you are raised to life for life See now death Cause death could not hold you The veil tore before you You silenced the boast of sin and grace The heavens are roaring The praise of your glory For you You were the word at the beginning, one with God and the Lord most high. The hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you. Sing it out. What a beautiful name it is. What a powerful name it is, the name. 
The name that is above every, every, every name. That name stands for everything that Jesus has done for us. All authority, all power, all principalities must bow to the name of Jesus. All of heaven stands behind the precious and the holy name of Jesus Christ, Father. We're so grateful for the name that is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. How many believe that? Amen? Thank God for it. Oh, thank God for the name of Jesus. You were saved through the name of Jesus. There is no other name that you can be saved but through the name of Jesus. The Bible says there is no other name. I'm sorry, but Muhammad can't save you. Buddha can't save you. No, you can't sing, Hare Krishna. He's not my sweet Lord. My sweet Lord is Jesus. Yeah. Remember when the Beatles were singing that? Hare Krishna. No, 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 no. Hare Krishna. It's Jesus. Amen. He's the only true Lord. Amen. I remember as young in the 70s, we would be singing a song. Remember, what am I singing, Hare Krishna? No, it's the Lord Jesus. He's my sweet Lord. Amen. He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. 
I want you to get your elements. We're going to take communion. If you need, if you didn't get a raise your hands, the ushers will get you one if you didn't get one. Over here, there's some in the front over here, ushers. Make sure everybody gets one. If you're joining us, live stream, welcome. Live streaming, welcome, amen. You weren't able to make it. Well, you're with us in spirit, glory to God. Ha happy to see you with us. Got a powerful word for you this morning. So listen up, we've got something good for you. But go ahead and get your bread out first. Remember, communion, a lot of times when we think about communion, sometimes we think it's just a one-way thing, but it isn't. It's two ways. If there's true communion, there's two people that are communing. Over what? We're communing over Jesus and what he's done. Amen? His finished work. Yes. So it's about what he, it's not about us. It's about him and what he did for us. Yes, he did it for us, but we're in him. Yes. Amen? And God sees us in, in him and his son. Hallelujah. So I want you to get the bread and I want you to say this. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank, you so thank you so much for the precious body of Jesus. He laid down his life for me. He was sacrificed. Took my place. Took my sin. Took all my sicknesses. All my pain. All my rejection. He was despised and rejected of men so that I could be accepted. Thank you that Jesus bore all my sickness, all my pain, and I'm healed and made whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, break and partake. Go ahead and get your cup. I want you to say this, Heavenly Father. When his body was pierced and broken and crushed, his precious blood came forth that cries out, forgiveness, freedom, because I paid the price for them, Father. That's what the blood cries out. Justice has been meted out. Jesus paid the price with his precious blood. And now we are righteous. We are holy. We are delivered. We are free. Free in my spirit. Free in my soul. Free in my mind. I can't be depressed. I got his peace. I got his joy. I got his deliverance. I'm, I'm heaven bound. I said I'm heaven bound. Thank you, Father. The blood has set me free. I'm not guilty anymore. I'm not guilty anymore. I'm forgiven. I'm free to worship you and to love others because of the blood. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, go ahead and partake. Amen. Thank you, God. You agree? Say amen. There's a bucket coming by. Go ahead and put the rest in there. It's right. And once you go ahead and greet one another, love each other, give each other a good hug. so good. You're at home. Hug your neighbor at, at home. Amen. Love each other in the Lord. Get off that, get off that sofa and hug each other in the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Hug the TV if you have to. Please God.
Well, God bless everyone. On behalf of pastors, we want to say welcome. If there's any first-time visitors, we want to welcome you. And if you're looking for a church, you just found one. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, just real quickly, I just want to let you know what's happening this week. We have our young adults uh, for Christmas party at 7 p.m. in the youth building. Get with Pastor Eric. He'll give you more details on that. And up on the screen, I'm sure you're looking at what's taking place there. Then also, right after church, anyone who participates in serving in the church on any department for you and your families, we do have a, an appreciation luncheon right after the second, right after this service in our Ramada area in the back. So don't leave. Make sure you stop by in the back. We have a luncheon specially for you and for your family, okay? And then also, um, I wanted to let you know that we've got some things that are lost. We found a ring here in the second, uh, last, uh, section here and it's a really cute ring and then there's also we lost a, a someone lost a gold heart with little diamonds and it's been in the back for a long time now after a while we don't know what to do with them and you'll see this uh, ring on my finger so <laughs> somebody has to claim it or you're gonna see it on my finger we have lemons in the back also. Somebody brought some lemons, and there's a bag full of lemons. If you want lemons, pick some up going out and take them with you. We also have a Bible, a really nice Bible, and it doesn't have a name, but it looks like it's a youth Bible maybe. I don't know, but it's, uh, let me see what kind of Bible it is. I don't see if it's a King James Version. It looks like a King James Version, but it's a really nice Bible as well. So somebody left it, and it's been there. I've seen it maybe for the last three, four months there as well, or even longer. So if you're losing things, make sure you stop by in the information table. See if you've lost anything. It's there, okay? But like I said, after a while, after this year, it won't be there, okay? So that's all I have to say for that. And then we have Pastor Linda coming up. She's got some announcements for the, for the youth. Thank you, Pastor Ruby. Good morning, everyone. Morning. I just want to announce that G1 Youth has some stuff going on. We didn't have our first Friday, the first Friday of this month like we normally do because we're having a Christmas party on December 15th at Uptown Alley. And we are going to make it for three hours, rather, from 7 to 9. We're going to be um, getting there at 6 o'clock. So parents, can you please drop off your youth and invite your cousins, invite your friends from school, invite your baseball buddies, your football buddies, your cheer squad. Invite them all. Now's the time. It's the holidays, and we want to extend God's love. Amen? And bring them on into the youth so that they can also grow. And we want to be an example. So that night, we will be staying till 9 o'clock at night. Parents, please be there by 9 o'clock. I believe that they start having a nightlife about 10 o'clock is what I read online. They have bands that come in, and it turns into a different kind of crowd. So we're going to be there from 6 to 9 o'clock. We're not staying for the after party. <laughs> Amen. We're going to, what, what it all includes is bowling the shoes, one hour of video games, there's no laser tag included, and all the food. This is all free of charge to you. Amen, parents, you should be shouting right now. <laughs> Let's give a hand to Grace Church, Pastor Mount and Lucy, and all who give that we're able to cover a big expense like this to have a nice Christmas uh, party for our, for our youth. So again, it's on the 15th, which is a Friday night. Drop them off at 6, pick them up at night, and invite someone. Amen? Amen. And go Niners. <laughs> Pastor John. <laughs> Come on, be nice. Everybody at the same time. Boo. <laughs> See, that's nicer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to go ahead and receive our offerings, so raise your hands if you need an offering. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. God is good. As we're coming into the Christmas, how many of you know that Christmas is around the corner? 
How many of you remember that it was like a year away, and now it's like two weeks away? Amen. But how many of you know also it's a, good, it's a time that many people uh, uh, become stressed out because of everything that goes on. Amen. And I know, you know, some get stressed out because they don't want to make tamales. They don't want to cook this. They don't want to do that. It's a lot of work. Glory to God. Amen. It is. But don't get stressed out. Amen. Don't allow stress to come in and, and overtake the reason that we celebrate this time of the year. Amen. It is about Jesus. Don't get stressed out and trying to make everything happen for everybody because sometimes it just ain't going to happen. Amen? Amen. And so you do what you can do yes. and let God take care of the rest. Yes. Amen. Yes. So raise up your, your offering to the Lord. We're going to pray over it. Pray over your needs in your home. Let's believe God. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We give you all glory and honor, Lord, that you are such a good God, such a faithful God, such a loving God, such a giving God. And, Father, we thank you that you supply all of our needs, Lord God. I thank you that everyone's needs are met in their home, Lord God, and all the needs of the church are met, Lord God, so that the word will continue to come forth in this place. So we give you all praise, honor, and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all said? Amen, amen. God bless you as you give. All right, let me get myself. Let me get myself on. There we are. How's everybody doing? Welcome, welcome to Grace this morning. We're excited. We have a, a powerful uh, service for you and some exciting things. And, and of course, at the end of the service, we're going to have our, our annual Appreciation Volunteers Award, awards uh, ceremony. And then, of course, after that, we have the luncheon back there. Listen, if you don't show up and you serve, you just wasted eight bucks that we paid. Catered lunch, eight dollars a person. Huh? The street tacos, it's catered, street tacos, it's going to be good. So it's for you that have, have served, even if you help the VBS, whatever, you can come to the luncheon and your family can come, amen, can come to the luncheon too. I think Pastor Lucy figured out it was about 145, 140 people when you include the, those that serve and those that uh, and their families. So that's a good portion of our people that either serve and have family members and so forth. So, so we welcome you to come. And partake of the blessing. It's 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 uh, we've used him many times. He, it's a, a good guy. He does a good catered lunch, and we've had Italian, we've had turkey, we had chicken. This we wanted to go back to the street tacos because <laughs> we're gonna eat other stuff for Christmas. So, amen. So you're welcome to 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 be a part of it and and enjoy enjoy us right after the service. Amen. We're excited for that, and thank you again for your faithfulness. And this is gonna be your day to honor what you've done. Listen, in October, you honored us as pastors and, and so forth. So this is our way now for us to honor you guys in your service for serving here at Grace Church. Amen. So we're grateful and thankful. Now, uh, I've been off the pulpit for, uh, what, three or four Sundays. And thank you guys for giving me that time to rest and so forth. So I appreciate you for, for doing that. And uh, so I'm you know, ready to minister and ready to share a word. But of course, today, because we're celebrating... Uh, you guys, those of you that serve in, in, in ministry here, we want to, you know, I have a special message for you and, and your family that I wanted to share. Amen? But let's, let's pray. Let's pray before we get into it. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Holy Spirit, who's our helper, our teacher, and our guide. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would give me utterance to speak your word boldly as I ought to speak, to speak the truth in love, but also, Father, give us utterance to hear what the, your spirit is saying through your word to help us and encourage us and exhort us in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, here's the title of today's message. Payday always comes from serving God. Payday always comes from serving God. Listen, I got saved, I got saved back in 1982 when I was just about to turn 20 in about April of 92 at my home at 14318 North Poppy Street in El Mirage, Arizona. And I was born on Alto Street, 
where the, you know where that well is, that well in Alto? There used to be a house doctor there. That's where I was born in 1962. So I remember growing up in El Mirage and, you know, living in this little town. At, I remember when Circle K showed up to El Mirage. That was like a big thing <laughs> back in the 70s because I was able to get those ding-dong things, those, those round ones. The, anyway, but, uh, you know, uh, I remember growing up and, and even, you know, going to college and still not knowing what, what, what was my reason, my purpose for living. And, and I remember, you know, thinking of, you know, why am I here? Am I going to be a, a landscape architect? Because I like building things and whatever. But I didn't know, you know, I, I just didn't know. And I remember thinking about, man, is this really all there is to life? Just growing up, getting up, you know, getting married, having kids and whatever, get old, and then you die? And that's it? That's, is that all there is to life? Because to be honest with you, to me, that wasn't enough. I said, really? Because after that, then like we're gone and, and I'm not going to know anybody anymore. Is that all there is to life? If that's it, then I don't, there's got to be more. So anyway, of course, when there in my room, back, some of you know, I got to hear the gospel and so forth. And I, I was born at, you know, I was raised in the Catholic Church. I knew about God, but I didn't have a personal relationship with God. There's a lot of people, oh, I know God, but do you really know him? Do you have a relationship with God? So I, I knew about God, but I, I, I didn't know him as far as salvation and as my Savior and Lord. You know what I'm saying? So I did, and I knew my whole life changed from that moment. I could tell why when I got up from, from, from that prayer. And, he, and here's the thing. The change that came in my life wasn't like, I mean, instantly it happened on the inside, but as far as on the outside, it was more gradual. As I was seeing things that I had done, whatever, I was repenting of things. See, a lot of times people think you've got to repent to come to God. No, the repentance, the change happens afterward because it's the Holy Ghost that's changing you. And so these things that I would repent of, it came later because God was revealing things. Hey, remember when you did it? Yeah, man, man. I, so God was dealing with things with me, taking care of things and whatever. So that came after knowing him, not to be known. He had to first save me and put his spirit within me and a hunger for his word that the change uh, happened. So anyway, so it's like, you know, what's the purpose of living? Is, is there a reason to live? So when I accepted the Lord, I knew it. I knew not only that I find my reason to live, I mean, not only that I found salvation, but I also found my purpose for living. I knew that now my life had purpose and that God had called me. I knew that I would be in, in ministry. I had no doubt about it. I knew that I had found my life. This is going to be my life, serve, doing God's will for my life. I, know, I knew it that I had found what I was looking for. Not just salvation, but purpose for life. And so... But, you know, as you start serving God and everything, you know, trials come. You know, I remember going through my divorce and, and all this stuff after four years of marriage. That was very hard. I was a young Christian and everything. And trials come in life and everything hits you and so forth. And how do you handle it? And, how, and, so, and all these things happen. But sometimes you start wondering, man, is it really worth serving God? Is it really worth serving God? Everything that I put, the time that I put in, sometimes I've sacrificed things, amen? I've, I've sacrificed things. Even, you know, it, it, I've been now 41 years serving God. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There's things that I know my wife and I have sacrificed in order to do the work of the ministry. I know that if I had decided to go into more into like building or whatever, I, I'm sure I'd probably own my own building company, building homes or whatever. I my wife and I would make a lot more money. She'd have live in a nicer house. We still live in the house I built for her back in 1992, 93. Same little house. We've been there for 30, what, what, now 31, over 31 years. And, I, and sometimes, I'm just being honest with you, sometimes I'd be like, man, I, I, see, I see other people being blessed and have these big fancy cars and, and you know, driving like Hill, Beverly Hillbilly style and, you know. <laughs> And here I, you know what I'm saying? And here I am, I still got my 2004 truck. And, uh, and I, I'm, not, I'm not having a pity party. I'm just, I'm just being realistic. Sometimes you feel like, is it really worth it? You know, how come they got all this nice stuff? And Lord, I've been serving you. I'm do, doing your will. I wish I could buy my wife a new, a new home and a nice big closet so she doesn't have to put the, the clothes in the back in the studio in the back and so forth. Can I be honest? So I've had those thoughts. You know, we've, uh, we've had to sacrifice sometimes. Even, even when my mom and dad were alive, we promised them that we would stick next to them. As long as they were alive, we would stick next to them. I remember when the ho bigger houses were going up here for 127000 Man, it would have been good for us to leave and buy one of those. It was a three-quarters of an acre, huge home. It would have been so much nicer. But we had made our commitment to my mom and dad 
that we will stay here as long as you're alive. My, and my dad passed away in 2003, 4. My mom, she lasted a lot longer. She, she passed away in 2018. She was 96. But you know what? No regrets. Because we made that commitment. We love and so forth. So as Christians, you know, we, we want to serve God. We want to do His will. And we sacrifice sometimes to do His will. And so I, I'm serious. Sometimes, I, you know, I, I want to give my wife the best. Amen? I, I believe my wife should get the best. Amen? And I'm, st I'm still believing for it. You know what I'm saying? But yet in the midst of it, sometimes you wonder, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And this is, what, this is why my title is, we're going to go to the book of Malachi. That's what the people were, were saying, the same thing. They were, they were, they, but the thing with them is they got worse. They started criticizing God. They started criticizing God. See, a lot of times we think that the worst sin is murder. Right? We think, or sexual immorality or something, we think that's the worst sins. Well, guess what? It says in, in the New Testament that, that one of the reasons that the people, children of Israel were destroyed in the Old Testament was because they were complaining. Complaining is as much a sin as anything else. And so in Malachi, Malachi says, God, you know, God start talking to the people through Malachi. Notice verse 13. Malachi chapter 3, verse 13. God says, your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You know, so they, they have been speaking mean things against God, complaining against God, and, and, and you know, and, and we're going to look into in just a little bit what they were complaining. But even in the previous chapter, they were complaining also. If you want to back up to Malachi chapter 2, verse 17, you see the same thing where they were complaining. And notice what they were complaining here. God says, you have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you say, in what way have we worried him? In that you say, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord. And what else? And he delights in them. Or, where's the God of justice? Amen. And, in fact, if you put that in the, in the message for me, notice, you make God tired with all your talk. How do we tire him out? You ask by saying, oh, God loves sinners and sin alike. God loves all. See, a lot of times when I preach on the grace of God and the love of God, some people mistaken me to, to think that God condones sin, that sin is okay and that He condones it. No, God loves sinners. God loves everybody. But the sin that you do, of course, why would He love it? Why? He can't love it because it's destroying you. It'll destroy your life. And so He doesn't love that. And so sometimes I think what's happening, even in the church world today, there's some churches that are now condoning all the lifestyle and whatever. Oh yeah, God loves everybody and everything. God loves everybody. So now it's like, okay, they're saying that God loves the sinner and he loves the sinner. Like, no, 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 no. That sin sent Jesus to the cross. The evidence that God doesn't like it is the fact that he had to send his son. Come on. There was a pi price paid for that sin. See what I'm saying? And then we're also saying, oh, God's too nice to judge. He's a nice God. He's not going to send people to hell. He's too nice. Or, where's the God of justice? Look at, look, you know, where's the God of justice? People get away with things. Amen? So, so again, they're, they're complaining. Amen? Listen, I, I mentioned in the first service, I mentioned it here. I remember Andrew Womack was saying, look, God loves you whether you go to church or not. He loves you, and he'll always love you whether you go to church or not. But if you don't go to church, you don't read your word, you don't pray, you're stupid. Yeah, you are. Why? Because, listen, see, a lot of times, I think when we talk about the grace and love of God, we focus so much on what God does for us, and sometimes I think we leave out our response to His love. For a relationship, it takes two to tangle. To have a true relationship, two have to be involved. And so, and so God has been giving and giving. He's pouring His love out on us. And what do we do? If we don't respond by reading our word and praying and worshiping and coming to church, guess what? You may feel like, I don't have a good relationship with God. Well, it's not God's fault. He's not running away. He loves you no matter what. It's your fault for what? Not responding to His love and coming to church so you can learn more, more about His love and, and how He loves you and cares and, and the wonderful promises that He has for you. So you see what I'm saying? So it's not like you, you think, well, I, don't, I, I feel like, man, I just, I don't feel like I'm growing in the Lord or whatever. Well, are you, are you seeking Him? Are you reading your word? Are you praying? Are you coming to church? If you're not, you're stupid. 
Amen? And listen, he'll still love you, stupid. <laughs> if you don't do it, he'll still love you. Stupid is, stupid does, you know, you know what I'm saying? He'll, he'll still love you. But let's not be stupid. Amen? Let's respond to his love. Amen? That's true in any relationship. It can't just be one given it all. It has to be mutual if you're going to succeed. And so with God, I think a lot of times preaching over these years on grace and love, uh, you know, I think we've, we've left out the, our response part of it, that we need to respond to it. And, and if we're not feeling like we're close to God, well, that's not God's fault. He hasn't drawn away from you. Now, the Bible says, draw close to Him, and He'll draw close to you. If you want nothing to do with Him, well, He's going to stay here because, well, I can't force my relationship with you. But as soon as you begin drawing to Him, okay, you want to get closer, dear? All right, come on. It takes two. It takes two, baby. It takes two, baby. Me and you, right? It takes two. Hey, you guys are blessed. You guys got that. The first service did not get that. So, <laughs> Anyway, let's move on. Verse, verse 14. Go back to Malachi 3, and let's go to verse 14. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 14. And here, now let's get back to their complaint. Here it is. Here it is to the message. You have said, the Lord says, it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts? It's useless to serve God. Amen? And you know, and, and so they had an attitude like, does it, really, does it really pay to serve God? Is it really worth it? You know what I'm saying? Now again, because I've been preaching on the grace and the love of God so much, it, there's some people that still don't understand it. They think that it just gives you a license to sin, not understanding that should cause you to respond to His love and love Him back. I, I told the first service, my dog, he's, he's, he's a legalist. My dog does not understand the grace of God. My dog is into performance. I know it. I can prove it. Because my dog only responds. When my dog sees me through the window, if he sees me through the window or he sees me doing something in the kitchen, that's when he starts barking at the, at the other dogs and starts chasing the birds and everything. I, when I planted the winter seed, when he should be chasing those birds away, Oh, no, he's not. He's relaxing, and he's just relaxing on the ground, you know, whatever. And, but then, when he sees me through the window, or sees, or sees, he starts. Rah, 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 rah. He's a, I'm, you know, master, I'm, I'm being the guard dog that I'm called to be for you. I am, I am serving you. I'm being the good guard dog that I'm supposed to be. I'm serious. You can talk to my wife. He, otherwise, he's laid back. But as soon as he sees me, he starts chasing the neighbor dog, starts chasing the, the bunny. We have a bunny rabbit, too. He'll chase him, too. And... He, yeah, he is, he's funny. I mean, he, he's a performance. He doesn't understand grace. And I've told him, you don't, he, you're walking in legalism. <laughs> you're, the, you're like a lot of Christians thinking that I have to perform for God to it. And I'm trying to let him know, listen, I, I love you whether you perform or not. Don't you? Love your dog whether you perform? And come on, you know, you guys love your pets more. Some, you know what I'm saying? You see your dog, oh, yeah, but me, yeah, but shy, in fact, I treat her like a girl. He's a boy, and I treat her like a girl. He, he's got cute eyelashes and stuff. And, and stuff. But, but the thing is, again, we treat our... And that's what I, like the minister that prayed, you know, that prayed, Father God, help us to love our spouses like we love our pets. <laughs> Why? Because every time we're around our pets, oh, mijito, he, he pees on you or she pees on... Oh, it's okay, mijito, I forgive you. But when it comes to our, our spouses or our loved ones or our kids, oh, God, what's wrong with you? What happened? Hey, Amen? Do we need to show up with a, with a dog outfit and whatever? And that way, oh, look, my little honey. Right? It's true. Why do we do that? So they're complaining and saying, God, it's useless. And listen, some of you have been serving God for many years. And you might, the devil might tempt you or their flesh that, is it worth it? Is it really worth it to serve God? Is it really worth it to come to church? Is it really worth it to read my word and pray? Listen, payday might not come on Friday. 
But payday always comes with God. Look at verse 15. Look at Malachi 3.15. So now, not only are they complaining it's useless to serve God, notice what they're also saying. Ah, so now we call the proud, look at the proud people of the world, they're blessed. For those who do wickedness and are, and are raised up or they're built up, they even tempt God and they go free. Look at, look at those that aren't serving God. Look at people in the world. Look at, look at them. They get, they're so prosperous, so blessed. And look at them. They, I know they're not doing walking with God. Look at the evil they're doing. And yet look at how it seems like they get away with murder, it almost seems like. Come on. Come on. Have you ever felt that? Have you ever sensed that? Come on. You see what I'm saying? That's what they were complaining to God. God, is it really worth it? Is it really worth it to come to church? Is it really worth it to pray, to seek you and whatever? Is it really worth my time? Look at the people in the world. Look at them. They don't go to church. Look at how blessed. Look at how, look at the nice Beverly Hillbilly Mansion he had. Eating in big bowls, Jethro bowls, eating their cereal. We got bowls like this, but they got big bowls like this. <laughs> right? Amen? Driving all those fancy cars. Come on. Come on. How come, how come, they, how come they seem to always be healthy? And how come they're always, every time on Facebook, andan in Guadalajara, andan in over here, andan allá, over there, they're all over the world. I feel like that guy from the I feel like the guy from the wonderful it's a wonderful life. Remember him? He couldn't get out of Bedford Falls. How many know that? I can't get out of El Mirage. I'm just stuck here in El Mirage. I would love to see the world and get away and, and, and travel and whatever. And here I am still serving God in El Mirage where I was born. I feel like the guy from Bedford Falls. Here I am stuck in Glendale. Some of you. Been in the hood in Glendale for years. When am I? The other day, the other day, I was trying to sleep on Friday, and all of a sudden, man, Elmer's is one of the most noisiest towns because we have the train that's right there, and it seems like I was trying, I was, I was literally getting upset because uh, right as sudden, and it seems like these guys that do the train, I think they do it on purpose to, I'm up, so you're going to be up, you know? Bah, 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 bah. Okay, three, four times, they keep going, bah. And then everybody at the intersection with their cars, I don't know why they want to show off that they got, you know, whatever. And they drive around our street. I'm like, hi, I can't sleep. I asked Pastor Lucy, did you sleep? Oh, I slept. I did, man. It was so noisy. I was like, I'm done. I want to move. Get out of it. You see, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I look at, you know, it's like, man, they're always on vacation. <laughs> and if they are, more power to them. I'm not jealous of them. I say more power to them. But I'm wondering, how about us, Lord? How about us? How come, you know, like I said it before, I wish, you know, my wife has to take some of her clothes out in the small closet she has and put them away and everything because she has no room. And I, I wish my wife had a nice big closet that she wouldn't have to do that. And you know, if I had chosen to go the way of the world, I probably would have been able to give her that. Why? Because I could, you know, building, contracting, whatever. Uh, like, uh, you know, I got a neighbor, this neighbor down over here. He's a Christian brother. See the big, huge house he's building? Wow. More power to him. I pray over him. Lord, I'm so thankful you're blessed. He's got a contracting company. I'm like, I could have been doing that. I could be building a house like that. Is it really worth it? Well, I'm here to tell you. I'm, I, no, I'm saying, is it worth it to serve God? I'm here to tell you, according to the scripture. Look at verse... And, and, and can you show me verse 15 in, uh, in Malachi uh, 3, 14, in the NLT, in the message uh, there? Uh, verse, verse 15 in the Malachi 3, 14, and 15. In the NLT or the message, whichever. Notice what they were saying. You have said, what's the use of serving God? 
What have we gained by obeying His commands or by trying to show the Lord of Heaven's armies that we are sorry for our sins? It seems like those other people, they're prospering. They're not even sorry for what they do. From now on, we will call the arrogant blessed. For those who do evil get rich. And those who dare God to punish them, they suffer no harm. Seems like they could just get away with, with murder. <laughs> Message says, when, when you said it doesn't pay to serve God, what do we ever get out of it? When we did, when we did what we said and went around with a long face sometimes, serious about God of the angel armies, what difference did it make? Those who take life into their own hands, they're the lucky ones. They break all the rules and they get ahead anyway. Do you feel that way some people do that? They push God to the limit and they get by with it. Come on. I know I'm talking to somebody in here. It seems like they just, you know, just get away with it. But listen to God's response. Verse 16. Verse 16. Then those who feared God, feared the Lord, in other words, those who worship God and, uh, and respect Him, spoke to one another. And the Lord listened and heard them. Now, I want, you to, I want you to stop there and just think about this first part. Notice, those who thought about this that we're talking about, man, it seems like people are getting away. Does it make any difference? But guess what? The, the people who believe in God, we all got together, just like you have this morning in church, to talk about it. And here we are. I'm talking to you about it. Does it pay to serve God? I'm talking to you. And, look, and listen, it says, and the Lord listened and heard them. So here's what I want to point. Look at your notes, verse 16, number 2 there. Payday always comes from serving God. Those who worship God, the believers spoke to one another. The, here's the importance of what? Being involved in a local body of believers. Why? So that we can exhort and encourage one another. Do you know what? The Bible says so much, if you want to go to Ephesians 4.32. The Bible talks so much about one another's. Be kind to one another. Notice what it says in Ephesians 4.32. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving what? One another. How though? Even as God in Christ forgave you. Listen, you can't do any one another's unless you're around one another. Come on. You can't do any of the one another's unless you're around one another. In fact, Jesus said the way the world's going to know that, 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 I, that I really came is by your love for one another. They're going to know you're my disciples. So if we're not loving one another, we're not being a testimony to the world of God's love and grace. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're holding a grudge against somebody, whatever, you need to let it go. It ain't worth it. That's why you need to be around one another. See, God will have you in church. And you might say, well, I don't like a certain person in church, whatever. Guess what? It's a test for you. God is testing you to see how you will respond. And guess what? If you fail the test, guess what? You have to take it again. <laughs> if, if you're dealing with somebody in church that's obnoxious, guess what? It's a test. It's a test. Are you going to pass it? Or are you going to be mean to them? It's not worth it. Listen, if you have a grudge against somebody, let it go. It ain't worth it. Why? You know, how, you know how I deal with unforgiveness in my life? I always remind myself how much he has forgiven. Forgive as Christ has forgiven you. I always remind myself how much, how, how much he has forgiven me. Would I want everybody to know what I've done? No. And I, I get you, you wouldn't want to either. Amen? Uh, one person. The other one, I guess you want... Everything about you to be known. Do you? Okay, who wants, who's first? Who wants to testify? Who wants to share all the evil you've done? No. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. If you love somebody, love will cover the multitude of sins. And so, and so again, this is so important because notice, you need, that's why, let's go to Hebrews 3, 12 and 13. Look at this. This is why it's so important that you come to church, that you read your word, that you pray, that you don't hold any grudges. And listen, if you have, let it go, forgive them, and do works that prove you've forgiven. What is that, Pastor? Try to re bring restoration. Yeah, but what if they don't respond, Pastor? You did your part. At least you did your part to, re you know. At, what you do by forgiving and letting it go is you open the door for them 
to be open to receive forgiveness and restoration. You did your part. But when both doors are closed, nothing can happen. Somebody has to, yeah, but I'm always the first one to ask for forgiveness. Well, guess what? May the mature one be first. And you can say, I'm the mature one. I'm always the one to ask for forgiveness. I must be the mature one. Notice what Hebrews 3, 12 and 13 says. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of what? Unbelief in departing from the living God. Okay, we don't want that. Who wants a heart of, that doesn't believe? Who, in other words, he's talking about departing or leaving the ways of God. But exhort one another what? See, listen, you're supposed to exhort one another what? Daily, while it is called what? Today, why? Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Listen, I preach a lot on the love and the grace of God because it's the truth, it's the gospel. But it shouldn't motivate you to go and sin. If you understand how much He loves you, who, in other words, you've got to respond to His love. You've got to take a step of faith and respond to His love. And, 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 the, and the thing is, notice it says, put that scripture back up, uh, the, the deceitfulness of sin. Notice, lest you what? Be deceived. Notice, you're supposed to exhort one another when? Daily. We need encouragement and exhortation daily. Why? Because listen, tomorrow doesn't come. What do you mean, pastor? You're living today. Yeah, but tomorrow's coming. No, no, no. Because when tomorrow shows up, it's no longer tomorrow. It's today. What are you going to do about it today? How do you live right now, today? So if you're going to forgive, don't wait till tomorrow. Do it right now, today. If you're going to walk in love, don't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow never comes. Tomorrow may not come. You may not see that loved one again. So today is the day the Lord has made. So what am I going to do? I'm going to rejoice and be what? Glad in this day. I'm not going to wait for tomorrow. Come on. Are you seeing that? We need extra. Listen. And the reason is because, listen, look at, look at your notes there. Let me, let me put it this way. Where it says, where it says Hebrews 3, 12 and 13. Here we are encouraged to exhort one another daily. Why? Because sin is deceitful and will harden your heart. Listen, God does forgive your sin when you sin. But there are still consequences to that sin. Especially if you murder somebody, you're probably going to end up in jail. Right? So as a believer, God wants us to have a tender conscience, not a hardened heart. See, the, the thing about sin is that it's deceptive. It's real deceptive. The thing about being deceived is that you don't know you're deceived. You can be deceived and you don't realize you are unless something hits you smack on the face and you hit rock bottom or something, it wakes you up and like, what am I doing? And you don't know you're deceived. So sin is deceptive. But let's look at a couple of translations of 12 and 13 and the Amplified. And listen, this kind of gives you, explains what that deception is. Therefore, beware, brethren, take care, lest there be in any of you, uh, of you a wicked, unbelieving heart which refuses to cleave to, trust, and rely on him, leading you to turn away and desert or stand aloof from the... See, it's almost, you're, standing, you're, you're, you're going away from God. God's not going away from you. You're the one standing back. You're not responding to him. Notice, keep reading, next verse. But instead, warn. See, we're supposed to warn. Admonish, urge, and encourage one another every day as long as it is called today. Why? So that none of you may be hardened into what? Settled rebellion. You can tell. You start talking to somebody about, hey, you want to? No, nah, I don't care. See that? Oh, you don't want to go there, people. That's one thing I've learned. That's why, like, when my mom died, I, Father God, you have to heal my heart quickly. I cannot minister with this grief in me. I ask for a special, supernatural, quick, heal my heart, like, quick, quick, quick. Otherwise, I can't minister. And you know what? He answered my prayer. Don't get me wrong, I still grieved over her loss and everything, whatever, but he gave me supernatural grace and I was able to go on and minister. I, you can't, you can't carry that kind of stuff. Listen, that none of you be hardened to settle rebellion by the deceitfulness of sin. Listen, by the what? It's a fraud, fraudulence, the stratagem, the trickery, which the delusive glamour of his sin may what? May play on him. 
Sin is deceptive. It, lo it looks glamorous. It's, it, it can be exciting. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Oh, the grass is greener on the other side. You know, it might be better with someone else. No, 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 you think it is. You're deceiving, you've deceived yourself. The grass is never greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. Tato seco? Regalo? Water it? Right? See, or, or, or the, enemy, you know, the enemies, you know, you've been, you've been serving God, all of a sudden you're being tempted to go back to drugs and whatever, and, and it's so deceptive, it feels it's going to be so exciting, you know, it's the natural high, you know, it's going to be like a natural high, and, and you're like, no, no, it's deceptive, how many know, how, how many have that, did you know, that's why even in the, the pornography, whatever, they work on that, they would put perfume on the pages and whatever, so what, it brings to your remembrance. I remember the smell. I remember the feeling. That's why some of you, when they show you the, the beer commercials and that's when you were so addicted to alcohol, whatever, and you see the sweat going in, whatever, you start sweating too. It's like... <laughs> it's deception! That's how they sell you stuff. They sell you something that, that they try to convince you it's something that you don't have that you really need when you really didn't need it. But they convince you, I can't, you can't live without it. And that's what the devil will do with sin. I can't do I need this. I need this. I need this. I can't live without it. Well, that's deception. Let's put another translation. Look at this. The other translation, Sally. Watch out, brothers and sisters, so that none of you have an evil, unfaithful heart that abandons the living God. Listen. Instead, encourage each other every day, as long as it's called today, so that none of you become what? There it is. See, we don't want to be insensitive to God. And that's what sin does. Even though God forgives you, what sin does, it hardens your heart a little bit. And you're not as sensitive to God like you used to be. Listen, we're supposed to maintain a childlike faith. That's one thing. And that's why I had to help. Lord, please heal my broken heart from the grief of losing my mom. I, I, can't, I can't get into depression. Because if I get into depression, I can't minister. I can't. And some people stay in depression for weeks. I can't. You know why? It's, it would scare me to get into, because I, I think I would maybe do something stupid. When, you, when you're in that foggy, messed up, whatever, you're, that's where, see, a lot of the mistakes are done. Why? Because you've been deceived, and you allow yourself to get down, and that's when you make stupid mistakes. You allow the deception to creep in and you're fogged up and you think, well, I need... No, you don't. You've deceived yourself. Man, this is a good message whether you say amen or not. It's a, it's a great message. And it's not a great message because I'm preaching. It's a great message because it's the Word of God. i got to start wrapping this up. But notice, all right, and then TPTs real quick. This is the time to encourage each other to never be stubborn or hardened by sin's deceitfulness. It is deceptive, man. That's how the enemy works. It's deceptive. Amen? Now, let's, let's, let's move forward now. Let's move forward. Look at this. The second part of verse 16 says, So a book of remembrance was written before him. If you go back to uh, Malachi 3.16. So a book of remembrance was written. Is it, is it the New King James or do you have the... Amplified or which one? Or is it CV or New King James? Huh? Yeah, verse 16, just the, the, the New King James, uh, if you could put that one. The one we just read. So notice the second part of that verse is, so there was a book of remembrance was written before him. God listened and what? A book of remembrance was written of all those. So here's a scripture that proves to me, listen, this is awesome. Those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before them for those who what? Fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. Guess what that tells me? That God keeps a record of every time we get together when you come to church and are around other people in the Lord. God writes, listen, he's keeping a record of your church going. There's a scripture that proves it. He keeps a record of when you read your word, when you pray and whatever. God, see, we think, 
You're, and when you're serving or doing something for God, you think I'm cleaning the diapers or whatever, God keeps a record. Listen, He keeps a record on those who remember Him, who meditate, who worship Him, and meditate. So God keeps a record. Is it worth it? You might think, is it worth it to come to church? Well, God's keeping a record. He knows what you're doing. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. I ain't talking about Santa. Amen? Look at, look at Malachi 16 in the CV. If, now if you could throw the CV or the message, whichever you have. Notice, all those who truly respected the Lord and honored His name started discussing these things. That's what I'm doing this morning. And when God saw what was happening, He had their names written as a reminder in His book. Ooh. God's writing. When you showed up to church, God wrote your name. All right, they showed up on 12 10, 20, 20, 23. God keeps a record of everything. Yeah. Pastor, does that mean when I didn't come last Sunday, it wasn't written down? No, it wasn't written down. <laughs> Missed. <laughs> no, look, there, again, he, he loves you, stupid. He still loves you. Look at message. Look at message. Then those whose lives honored God got together and talked it over. God saw what they were doing and he listened in. Guess what? God hears, if you, if you come to church and you're complaining, God hears that too. A book was opened in God's presence and minutes were taken, oh, hello, minutes were taken of this meeting with the names of the God-fears written down. All the names of those who what? Honored God's name. When you come to church, you're honoring God's name. Now, let's wrap it up. Look at verse 17 now. Malachi chapter 3, verse 17. So that's goodness. And here's the, ooh, this is the good part right here. Look at, listen to what God says about it. Ooh, I love this. Here's what God says about you. If you honor God, you come to church, you read your word, you serving. Listen, they shall be what? Mine. Amen. Like I said in the first verse, mine. You're mine now. Amen. What? Which one? You're mine, and we belong together. Yes, we belong together for all eternity. Eternity. Okay, stop it. All right. Jesus, they shall be mine, says the Lord, on that day that I will make them my what? Ooh, you're, you're God's jewel. I'm going to make them my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who what? Who serves him. God the Father treats us like Jesus. And when he says that he would spare us like he would spare his own son who serves him, well, who's that? That's Jesus. Jesus faithfully served them. And God treats us like if we're Jesus. So he's going to spare us too. Ooh, glory to God. Look at, the, look at a couple of trans. And that's why no wonder 1 Peter 2, 9 says. Notice 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 talks, talks of that you're, you're, a, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation, his own special people that you may what proclaim the praises so that way you can tell the world of what God's done for you the proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light no wonder no wonder Ephesians 2 10 NLT Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says that that you are you are God's masterpiece you're a masterpiece for God you are his what his masterpiece created anew in Christ Jesus so you can do the good things that he planned for you to do long ago are you seeing? You're God's treasure. You're God's possession. In fact, let's look at that verse 17 in a couple of translations. If you can put the Amplified. In that, and they shall be mine, the Lord says, the Lord of hosts. In that day when I publicly recognize and openly declare them to be my what? My jewels, my special possession, my peculiar treasure. Yeah, you guys are per pretty peculiar. <laughs> peculiar. And I will spare them. As a man spares his own son who serves him. Look at, look at, uh, uh, look at the CV. CV for me if you got that one. 
Then the Lord All-Powerful said, You people are precious to me. He's talking to us. You're precious to me. And when I come to bring justice, in other words, when, I, when Judgment Day comes and Jesus comes up, listen, I will protect you just as parents protect an obedient child. Come on. Now look at, look at, look at this. Uh, you got the NLT too or did you do that one? Look, there, he says, they're going to be my people, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. On that day when I act in judgment, they will be my own special treasure, and I will spare them as a father spares an obedient child. Now look at verse 18. Verse 18. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve God. Now listen, here's what's the point. Again, again, it makes a difference. He's saying, my goodness. He's saying, again, you're going to be mine. And what God was saying, judgment day is about to come. Those of you that say, well, God, look, he's letting people get away with murder. Listen, no, judgment day is coming. And, and listen, though, before that judgment day comes, I'm coming and I'm going to take you out of this world. You're my jewel. You're my crown. I love you. And I'm uh, like a bride. I'm going to take you to heaven to be with me. Jesus said, uh, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm going to come and receive you to myself. Self, you're going to leave. I'm going to take you in the rapture and I'm going to protect you. I'm going to keep you safe and then I'm going to judge the world for all the evil things that they did do. And those saying that, oh God, you're letting people get away. No, no. Those people who don't receive his love and don't receive his grace, they will be judged for the evil that they did. A rejection of grace, a rejection of God, of Jesus, is a rejection of his love. And therefore, they will be judged. Amen. So that's what he's saying. I'm going to, listen, you might say, does it pay? Let, now let's put the, let, give me a message of verse 17 and 18 and the message to end. God of the army, angel's army said, they're mine, all mine. They'll get special treatment when I go into action. They're going to get special treatment. I treat them with the same consideration and kindness as parents give the child who honors them. Once more, you'll see the difference it makes between being what? Between being a person who does the right thing and one who doesn't, and between serving God and one that does not serve God. So listen, you may have been serving God for many years. You may have, you may have been serving, getting rid of you know, pukey diapers, and I'm sure in the Book of Remembrance, there's a special, special writing there, especially when it's poopsie oopsie. You get, you get a special reward for doing the diapers in the nursery. You, some of these guys that are out here, security, they're not, you know, they're not in here hearing the word or whatever. God has a special thing for them. Payday may not come. Some of you have been serving God for years, but let me tell you, it, Jesus is coming soon. And guess what? Payday might not be in Friday. Payday might not be Saturday. But when payday comes, it's coming. And it's going to be big. I said it's going to be big. And... So those of you that have sacrificed for the Lord, sacrifice your time, your effort, your talent, your treasure, and, and having nicer things because of things you've done for the Lord. I'm here to tell you that God is going to reward you. He's going to take you out of this world, and you're going to go to heaven to be with Jesus, and you will be rewarded for, the, for what you thought, oh, I've sacrificed so much, and you're going to say, oh, are you kidding me? What I did was nothing, Lord. What you did on the cross for me is the greatest sacrifice that was ever done, and what I did in serving you that was nothing compared to your what you did Jesus I love you thank you so much for loving me thank you for for the honor of being able to serve you it pays to serve God and God will honor so I want to end this I got to end because it's already gonna be 1230 here and I have the words we'll do it real fast we'll do it real fast anyway listen I don't just want you to hear this message and do nothing about it. Because their, their problem was why? Complaining is just as bad as anything else. And if I would be honest and ask you to raise your hand, I would dare say almost everybody in here, one way or another, had either ta you know, taken God for granted or complained because things haven't happened the way I expected. You've gone through trials. You've lost loved ones and you wondered, has it been worth it? One day, when you stand before God, you'll think none of that. You'll be so full of joy. Those that have gone ahead of us, if they were to come back and they would tell you, man, are you kidding me? When the doors of the church open, when there's a prayer meeting, when when are you kidding me? Be there! 
You should see how blessed I am. So I want to lead you in a general prayer. And I want you to be truthful in your heart to do that. If whatever it is that you, you know, but we're going to pray it right now. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. I, I, I believe, you know, it's time. That the Bible said, let judgment begin at the house of God. But repentance starts with us. And so I want you to, heads bowed, eyes closed. And again, this is just a general prayer, but you know in your heart. And I want you to say this, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. I've learned so much about your goodness and love and your grace. But Lord, I realize that I have complained, that I've been down, that I've treated ministry and serving you and coming to church less than I should. It is important. And I'm sorry for all the times that I've complained for serving you or going to church or reading my word and that I've said doesn't make any difference. It does make a difference. I know you always pay. I love you and I want to do your will. No matter how I feel, I want to respond to your love and love you in return like you have loved me. Lord, have your way in my life. Your will. I will serve you gladly and joyfully all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we're ready for the presentation of the awards for all those who have been serving. So if I need state your name, I want you to come up. You want to help me, hon? Oh, you want this? Okay. Well, if you want to help find the cards and stuff, yeah. Um, so here's what, here's, here's what uh, we're giving away. This nice, shiny, gold-plated medal. And, uh, and also, you're going to get a, a $25 gift card to spend, you know, all in one place. Because <laughs> you can't. <laughs> That's, anyway. So if I state your name, I'm going to admit, here's what we did. Every department we cho you know, was chosen, someone from every department was chosen to be the volunteer of the year. Again, Pastor Uncle Mike, you're getting a lunch. Those of you that didn't get selected, you're getting a lunch. Away. <laughs> Everybody's getting something, okay? But how many know when somebody gets honored in the family, everybody gets honored? Yeah. When you get blessed, we get blessed. Yeah. We're honoring Jesus in us. Amen? So, Frankie was. Okay, so from the children's department, Frankie Mendeville, come on up. All right. Go get over here. You can do your walk if you want. All right. Frankie, here you go. Thank you so much you. for helping Speaking in the you. children's. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Emma. I think I already gave. Now, Emma, I yeah, I already did. But for the nursery, and I've already, she got it in the first service, Emma Eckhart, and then helping in the nursery. Yeah, she, right in fact, she's in the nursery serving right now. So thank God for Emma. Amen. She's a blessing. Amen. In the youth department, we got two people because we could, you know, they, they couldn't decide. Nevaeh Eckhart, is she here? Is she serving? And Elijah. and Elijah. You got him? Hold on. I don't think here. Hold on. Here's Elijah's. And oh, they have different. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here you go, Elijah. Here's Elijah. yours. Nevaeh's not here, though. Right. Nevaeh. So we'll save Nevaeh's. Well, we can give it to John because oh. he's going to come up here. John okay. Eckhart. Okay, we'll save it for them. Okay, the next one here, you'll see who's next. Media. Alex Ramirez. All right. All right, all right. Thanks, Pastor. Yeah, bless you, bless you. Amen, amen. Actually, 
Alex has been helping in the media department. We thank him for that and everything. And actually, uh, he actually he was here in the first, and we gave him the medal, but he wanted to do it again. So <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Give me the card back then." <laughs> so, security team, John Eckhart. Amen. <laughs> You're gonna give her an avail. All right. Thank you, John. Thank, you. Thank you, John, for being faithful and serving there. And this is Nevaeh. And this is, yeah, I'm going to give that to Nevaeh, too. Thank you so much. John's faithful back there serving, out there, guiding the stuff and everything. Armando. Okay, next one, under the ushers department, Armando Angel. <laughs> Come on up. All right. Here you go, Brother Bundy. Don't spend it all in the same place. All right. God bless you, eh? Faithful. All right. Next one. Under the greeters department, we got two of them. Uh, Johnny Frosto and Carmen Diaz. All right. All right, here you go, Johnny, and here's your gift. Here, let's turn that around, there you go. And Carmen, come on over here. Oh, turn around, they're taking a picture over there, Mira. She, taking, I'm sorry, <laughs> turn it around there. Here you go, turn around that way, so you take a picture of you. Who's next? Uh, you, you just need to read these ones, because they already Oh, okay, died. okay, I'll read those then. And then. All right, next one. Now, uh, uh, she already got it, but she's right here uh, in the cafe. Cindy Diaz over here. She already got it, so thank you, Cindy. Amen. And then in the altar, uh, she's not here either. I don't know if they're coming. It's, it's Catherine Hernandez. She'll be getting a medal in the altar. Yeah. And, and, then, uh, and then in the praise team, now he got it in the first service. Mike over here, Brother Mike Bastian. He plays the guitar, faithful to play the guitar. He got it in the first service. And then now, also live streaming, those helping in live streaming, uh, Cecil. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, yeah, it's in there. Hold on. You got the card though? All right, Cecil. Helping with the live streaming, the camera, and so forth. Thank you, Thank you. you're welcome. Amen. Thank you. Thank you Amen. Much. You can you can share with Bertha a little bit if you want. transportation he but he's not here okay, he's now he's not here and he's probably watching I told him to watch online yeah. in transportation is Wendell Martin he's not Thank here you, but Wendell. he's watching he's, he's, he's recovering getting better yeah. we have the card here in the middle for you all right yeah. and then young adults and uh, uh, for young adults department Ciara Molina Yay, Ciara. <laughs> there you go like over there they're gonna take a picture I already did it, Eric. Now, the Extra Mile Award, I already gave it in the first, but I want to recognize uh, during the time when we needed some help with the youth, he stepped up to help. Eric Williams, he helped us. Extra Mile Award, we already gave him the medal in the first service. But now, for the biggie, for the biggie, every year we select one male awesome volunteer of the year that we felt that they went above and beyond and and also one female or woman awesome it says grace church awesome woman volunteer 2023 so and they not only get this they get a hundred dollar gift card for and this nice little plaque and so forth so this year we selected the awesome woman volunteer of the year grace angel You, got, you have a medal too? Now, now Grace here, the reason we selected her, because, I mean, she helps, she's helped in so many departments, whatever's needed. She has stepped up and gone on beyond, beyond, come early to be help. Sometimes she's even driven the, 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 the Gracie, her own, her own vehicle. Um, <laughs> 
when we needed help. So she's gone more than up beyond, so we wanted to honor her as the Woman of the Year volunteer. Here she comes, Miss Volunteer. Miss Grace. And here you get this nice little little plaque and so forth to remind to thank you thank so you, Gracie. much. God bless you, eh? God bless you. Cry now, smile later. Now, this one here, the, the, for the man, Volunteer of the Year, and, and I know he's very humble and he probably wouldn't want it anyway, but I'm going to give it to him anyway. Um, uh, I wanna, uh, we're giving this one to Harvey Mendeville. Where's Harvey? Come on up, Harvey. Come on up. <laughs> Come on up. And the reason, I'm, and reason we're doing it, see, some of you don't know, but Harvey actually with the building... He gave all of his time after work, putting the internet, the, all the wiring, the internet, uh, help framing, and on his own time. And we were trying to pay, and he paid it with his own money too. All the material, everything. He went above and beyond. And so we want to honor, honor him and stuff like that for that. I know, I know. He's like, you didn't have to do it. I, I know. But God wants you to be honored. Yes, God Amen. God wanted Amen. to honor you. You're, you're, you, honored you honored him. God wants to honor you. And so here's a little, little thing to put there. I'm sure. Amen. Thank you, Harvey. Okay. You want to let him know we'll be going out in a little bit. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's already, it's already time to eat. So, so I'm just going to give these out. I just want to recognize others that are serving in some of our departments. I know we recognize our pastors. Esther Ostrander, come on up. These are head of our departments that I wanted to honor and respect and thank them for, for all that they do. Thank God for every department head and, and so forth that are serving. Thank you, Esther. Michelle, Michelle Eckhart, is she here? Michelle, come on up. Serving in the nursery. Richard, Richard Mindeville, ushers department. Come on, Richard. Serving in the ushers. Amen. Coco Padilla, is she here? Where's Coco? Is she in the back already? All right, I'll spin her card. Um, where's Lalo? Lalo, come on up. Lalo, they're serving praise and worship. God bless you, Lalo. Don't, don't spend it all in the same place. Right? And... Uh, and also Christy, Christy, come on up in, in the prayer department. God bless you, Christy. Thank you. And also, um, and also, uh, somebody hand this over. This is uh, for Sister Patty helping us so much in the in the in the groups and stuff like that. So, you, somebody want to give that to her? We'll give that. Oh, Coco, here you are. Th here's Coco. She's the cafe. Amen. Hey, listen, I'm gonna pray over the food. And so that way it's blessed. We're going to go this way. Okay. And those of you who are watching, I wish we could he be here and eat with us. Just eat something by faith. Hello. Okay, there we go. Okay, just a few instructions.